Do you need tavern tiles for your next game? Well, stay tuned and see how we built these. Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Maldor's Craft. Today we're talking about tavern tiles. I've been wanting to do a set of tavern tiles on this channel for a long time and I've also wanted to build a set of tiles for the gaming table for a very long time and uh, this is what we came up with. And as you can see here we have uh, these tiles built in the 3x3 three three format, 3 inches by 3 inches square versus the uh, two inch square format. Um, I think these are a lot more versatile, a little bit more playing room, and you can do a lot more with them. You don't have to just use them as tavern tiles. You can use them as a stage. You can use them as a an inn floor, maybe even a little hut floor, a Tudor hut floor. Pretty much anything you can think of. And uh, I think these really turned out great. So uh, let's go to the crafting table and see how I made these. So we're gonna go ahead and start off by using our hot wire table here. And we're gonna be using half inch XPS foam. And here I'm just making my three by three square cuts. Now when you're making these cuts, just go ahead and make a whole batch of these things. I went ahead and made 10 pieces here. Alright, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just using my ruler and I am making marks with my sharpie here at the 1 inch and 2 inch. I'm just putting my ruler right at the end and I'm trying to make it equal to three inches as best I can. It doesn't have to be exactly perfect and I'm just going to go ahead and spin this thing all the way around and I'm going to keep making my little marks at the one inch and two inch. So once you're finished with that, um, go ahead and grab your utility knife or X-Acto knife or whatever you have on hand and I'm going to use the ruler here and I'm just mating up both marks on the opposite ends of each other and I'm just making about two to three cuts. And when I'm making these cuts, I'm not going all the way through, I'm just barely grazing the top just enough to where I can deepen the cut line with my mechanical pencil later on. And as I'm making these cuts, I'm just going to go ahead and keep continue to spin this thing around and I'm just going to make a total of nine squares. And when you're finished, you should have something that looks like that. So after you make your cuts, go ahead and grab a mechanical pencil or whatever you have on hand. I like the mechanical pencil. Um, it seems to, to go inside the lines nice and deep and kind of open them up and make them look more defined. 
when I use the mechanical pencil, uh, I retract the lead. I don't have the lead out right now. It's just the little tip at the end. And now that uh, one inch grid tile is uh, starting to come along nicely. After you make your lines completed with the mechanical pencil, go ahead and grab your X-Acto knife or whatever you have on hand and now we're going to go ahead and make three lines I'm sorry two lines in each one inch square and what that's going to do is represent three wooden planks inside each one inch square and again the same thing when you're cutting these lines inside the foam you're not going all the way through, you're just going basically at the surface, just enough to get your mechanical pencil in there to really define these lines. And as you can see here, every two lines that I cut in each individual square, I change the orientation. And naturally by default, when you do this, every single tile that you make, when you put them together, they're going to come uniform and you'll see that here when we put them all together at the end now when you're making these cuts inside the one inch square you want to make it look like there's three planks in each one they don't have to be exactly perfect as you can see there, I made that one just a little bigger than the other, and the one on the end is kind of skinny. That's okay. So now we're going back to the mechanical pencil and again we're just going straight through those lines that we had already previously cut. I don't have the lead out, it's actually retracted so I'm just using the tip. I usually go through these lines about two to three times. If they don't come out how I want them to, just go ahead and go back over them. And, um, Adding a little bit of pressure, not a lot of pressure, because if you start to drag through there, you'll actually tear the foam and it'll start to rip. Now our 3x3 three three, uh, tile piece is starting to look like a tavern floor. So now when you got all that finished up, um, you want to go ahead and uh, black bomb the whole entire thing. As you can see here, I uh, have a black bomb mix of Mod Podge and black paint. Um, I like to use apple barrel paint, so this is a... Uh, 50-50 mix of white Mod Podge and black paint. And when you're doing this, you want to go ahead and get inside the uh, crevices of those lines you had cut. Uh, I like to get them in real deep. That way when they dry, um, the lines are real defined once I start painting it up. And with the black Mod Podge mix, this not only uh, adds a uh, base coat for your paint when you're going to paint paint it up, but this also strengthens strengthens the piece as well.
And as you can see here, every time I go over each piece, I try to go in the same direction as the lines are cut. That way the black paint seeps into those crevices. And just as we've done in the previous videos, you don't want to glob this stuff on there. You want to put enough to get in the crevices and then once they're in the crevices, you want to spread it out evenly. And as you can see here, I'm just going ahead and spread all that black bomb evenly over the whole entire piece. That way it dries faster. So here I decided, you know, why not paint the sides while I have it ready to go? So. What I'm doing here is I'm also black bombing the side of the panel. I do two sides, that way I have something to grab onto. I wait for this piece to dry and then I move on to the next and I do the same thing. And then once I get to my last piece, I come back to this piece and then I paint the other two sides. So once you have all your pieces black bombed, um, go ahead and use a brown of your color. This is Apple Barrel Nutmeg. I really like this color for wood and in this case the tavern tiles. So what I tried doing here is a light dry brush just to see how it would turn out. I didn't really like how this came out so I decided I'm gonna go a little bit heavier and a little bit darker. And as you can see, I'm not painting with the lines that I had cut in each individual square. I'm painting in the opposite direction. That way the black lines where the paint is in the crevices really stands out. And as you can see here, I decided to go a little bit heavier and I think that turned out really nice. So I'm just gonna go ahead and continue doing the same thing for the rest of the tile. Again, you want to go ahead and try and make sure that those black lines are uh, really defined. That way it gives the effect that there's three wooden panels in each one inch square. And now the more and more we add some paint, this tile is really starting to come together and starting to look like a tavern tile. Now as you're painting these pieces, as you notice the top left corner square is starting to turn real light and the black's almost kind of bleeding through. If it does that, don't worry about it. It's fine the way it is. Let it dry because we're going to add a lighter brown over the top of this along with some orange to really highlight this. So it'll just add to the effect of the tile itself.
starting to look pretty good. So now what I have is apple barrel orange and I'm doing a very, very light dry brush here. And for whatever reason, I love adding orange to the brown or any of the wood pieces that I make. It really makes the wood pop out and give it that old woody grainy effect. And with that, now this tile piece is really starting to come to life. So after you do the orange, um, go ahead and mix a white with some brown. And I know it doesn't seem like brown in the video. It looks more like a white dry brush, but uh, it really is a light brown dry brush. I went ahead and added white and brown nutmeg and I'm just doing a light, light dry brush on top of the uh, wood piece here. And what this is doing is it's giving the grain effect in the wood. And once it comes closer, you can really see that texture inside the wood panel. It's starting to look really, really good. So after that dries, I went ahead and went back over it with another dry brush of nutmeg brown and that's going to be it for the rest of this tile. Now this tile is really popping and coming to life. Looking good. So now I've got all my 10 tile pieces completed here and we're just going to go ahead and put this thing together and make a tavern. And as before I was saying that naturally, by default, the way these pieces are cut, you can put them together and the floors will be unison with each other. All right. Let's go ahead and add some minis to this thing and put this tavern together. I'm going to go ahead and put a door here at the entrance. Let's go ahead and put a bar right about here. And I think we need a couple barrels of ale. That way we can serve our patrons. And we're going to go ahead and add a couple more barrels of ale here just in case because might be a pretty good party in here tonight. Got some backup barrels of ale here in the corner. Some supply boxes for some provisions, maybe some food in there. And let's go ahead and add a couple stools here for the bar. And maybe a couple tables. Yeah, I'll just go ahead and put some tables right over here. And they could use some stools as well. I'm going to go ahead and add some little round tables over here. If I like where that one went. We're going to go ahead and move this one over here. And what is a tavern without a hearth? Got to have a hearth. And we'll go ahead and put that right about there. Go ahead and put a nice little rug in front of that. Now we need a bartender. Let's go ahead and add a bartender in here somewhere. There's our bartender. And let's put a patron right here in front of the bar. 
ordering up some drinks. We'll go ahead and add a, uh, we'll add a mean wizard. He's coming in here starting to fight with everybody. And uh, one of the patrons is bothered, so he decides to fight with him. And then in the meanwhile, two adventurers are just uh, keeping warm by the fire over here. And there you have it. There is your tavern all put together. Tile's looking pretty good. And that's how you do tavern tiles. As you can see, it really didn't take much to uh, put these little guys together. If you take an afternoon, even a weekend, you can craft about 10 of these up easy. I went ahead and crafted uh, 10 of these tavern tiles in an afternoon. That was including cutting, putting in the uh, one inch squares, also putting in the little little lines for each board in each individual square, and painting and dry time. You could have 10 of these in an afternoon or a weekend, depending on your schedule and time. So if you like what you saw here today, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. And uh, if you build any tiles, I love to see your tiles. I like to see how you guys put yours together. And if you guys uh, construct any of these, go ahead and send uh, send me some pics, send some comments. Um, you can reach me at maldorscrafts at gmail.com. Again, that's maldorscrafts at gmail.com. And I also have a, a new Facebook page also titled Maldor's Crafts. Go ahead and check that out. Every week uh, when we construct something, I go ahead and put them up on the page so everybody can view it. Um, like, share, and subscribe. Add a comment to this channel. Um, I'd like to hear from you guys. So once again, thanks for stopping by. And as always, stay crafty.